Hi guys! Today I wanted to talk about Ellie's genetic disease that she got diagnosed with um, at birth. So it's called biotinidase and how we found out is through newborn screening. Newborn screening. It's a pamphlet we were given. Um, this is done we're in New York State, but this is done, every state has a genetic screening program. So if your child is born in the hospital, they do this before you leave the hospital. And I believe um, in the hospital they do it um, by their blood, okay? I'm reading the pamphlet as I do it, but I'm, I think it's blood, I don't think it's urine. Um, so it's a blood test before you leave the hospital, this is done. And the babies are screened for up to, I think it's like 40 something genetic diseases that they know how to test now. Um, this is the list of the diseases, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm just going to say like that's the list of them. And what had happened, what was our story, was we came home from the hospital. I had Ellie on a Sunday afternoon. We were home by Tuesday. By the following Monday, I had a phone call from um, our nurse at her pediatric office. And they were trying to get a hold of us. And they needed to send us to a genetic doctor um, a little bit further away from home. And we needed to go in to do further testing there. So I called and kind of got, they gave me the information about biotinities over the phone and of course I could start googling it, kind of see what they're talking about, um, whatever, but I didn't really know the process until we went. So that, so that was Monday, so Tuesday we drove over there and what they did was they needed a urine sample, and the only reason I'm smiling because you guys know if you've taken a urine sample from a girl, a baby girl, it is very difficult to get that urine sample. So this appointment was about four hours long, and it was long also because we had many um, people to talk with. So um, at our place, we have a doctor that we talk to. We have a nurse uh, practitioner that's under the doctor that we talk to. We have a genetic counselor that we can talk with, um, and then we have a nurse. And we see these guys every single time, and I've also met with uh, the dietitian slash like nutritionist. So we see these guys every time we go, and the first time that we went, we had to get, like I said, the urine sample. They basically interviewed us about um, our health history, my husband and I. Um, our siblings, our parents, like, um, I forget which, it might have been the genetic counselor. She basically laid out our family tree and we said, you know, we have these many siblings and these are their health issues. Um, so you kind of got to know your family's past, which, uh, you know, I'm still, like, I was like 10 days postpartum, exhausted, not really sure what was going on. It was... It was very hard being interviewed at that point, but I just thought <clears throat> we told them what we knew up front and we could always add to it as we went. So, um, which we did because they all came in and interviewed us separately. So like if we forgot to tell one person one thing, then the next person came in and I think it was the doctor and she was like, oh, I didn't see that on the chart. And I was like, oh, we forgot to say, you know, so-and-so had this problem. Um... So while we were being interviewed, they were trying to get the urine sample, um, which, yeah, that's why I said we were there for four hours. But through all of that, after all the interview, she also needed to do blood work. Um, so she had her blood drawn, and she didn't really, it didn't really seem to bother her. They did have, like, sugar water that I quickly dipped to, like, think her passing, and I put it in her mouth as they did it, but she didn't really seem... To flinch or anything. So then after that we went back into the room and I was kind of like, is this how every appointment's going to be? Like I have to block out the whole afternoon for this? Um, so it was just the urine sample and we've gotten better at that. We finally have a system down. So after the appointment they got back to us 
Um, actually, I think at that appointment they told us exactly what her treatment was going to be because from the newborn screening, it came back that she had zero of biotin in her body, and that means her body doesn't recycle it. So, um, being zero, you know, we were doing further testing to double to double check, but it was basically going to be a given that she had this disease or disorder. So they um, they gave us a prescription, and it's uh, biotin. It's a specific brand called Mirabin. And she takes a 5 milligram capsule every single day. I cut it open and I put it in her morning bottle. And we've done this since getting those results back. So what biotinidase is, is her body doesn't recycle biotin. On a normal person, such as myself or even my husband, because we don't have this um, disease or disorder, our body, when you eat it, our body automatically recycles it, so you're always constantly having it in your system. For her, she always has zero. So that's why we start every single day, we put it in her body. And that's, you know, she'll have to do this forever. It's not a short term thing by any, by any means. So I'm just going to read this basically what it says. It's an inherited con condition in which the body is unable to reuse and recycle uh, the, the vitamin biotin. And this is something... Um, I just want to say, like, disclaimer, a lot of people are taking biotin now to grow their hair and stuff like that, but this is, this has to be a different brand, a different version. Um, but this says, because the body needs free biotin in it to break down fats, proteins, and carbohydrates effectively. In, uh, individuals with biotin are less able to process important nutrients. Um, so apparently there are two different types of it and they differ in severity uh, but both are serious health could cause serious health concerns so that's why they do the um, screening and the how common is it it's one in sixty thousand so it's not common at all and like I said we go to the genetic doctor and so far she's fine and is progressing you know just like any normal person but that is because we had the genetic screening done and because we have followed up and gone to the doctor and gotten her health taken care of very early on um, <clears throat> like I said the the early signs would have been a seizure um, I also said something about you could have like rashes, I don't know if that's like eczema, what they were saying, um, but stuff like that, I'm trying to see what this is, seizures, a weak muscle tone is another one, uh, trouble breathing, skin rash, hair loss, uh, troubling with her balance, and then a fungal infection called I think this is just the word for yeast infection, so I'm going to say that. Um, but she did, we did struggle with that when she was an infant. But, um, I'm trying to think, like, once she started the medicine, if we were still struggling with that or not. Can't remember. But anyways, the, I wanted to say, like, the chances of the next baby having it is only 25%. So we have, um... A 50% chance that she'll just be a carrier, like Adam and I, or a 25% chance that she won't carry it, or a 25% chance that she'll be like Ellie and have the same genetic disease. Um, like I said, it doesn't seem to run in our family. I don't know if we were tested for this when we were babies. Like. This said, this program, the genetic screening program, started in 1965, so that kind of makes me think that we were probably tested for it. Um, most parents don't even realize that their kid was tested for it, um, because they never get the call back saying that something was wrong. So, like, I've asked um, friends or family, and I say, you know, how about 
how about this or how about that? Did you guys do genetic screening? And they they can't really say because there's no problem. So um, if you're concerned that your newborn didn't get screened, I would just call call where you gave birth, call their pediatrician, like check up and say, did my newborn get screened? If they're having problems, um, you can see all the all the disorders screen. This, these are in New York State, so it might vary by state too. Um, all right, guys. So that I think that's what I wanted to cover. Just kind of signs and symptoms of biotinidase if it's not detected. If it is detected and it's in their body and they're going to the doctors regularly to get checked, like her urine gets checked at every appointment. That's what I kind of need to say to make sure the five milligrams is good enough. Her urine does get checked every time. And now I started doing it at home. So we do it right before we leave in the morning to go to the doctor, and the appointment is shorter. <laughs> um, so we don't have to be there all day. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, a lot of it's online. If you um, want to look a little bit more into newborn screening, or how it's done, or how it's followed up on, and yeah, I'm I'm very happy with the turnout because um, honestly, I didn't know what we were getting into when I first got that phone call from the nurse at our pediatric office. I thought I thought something was very very wrong, um, and I'm just very thankful that um, treatment has been easy. Once, you know, we have a system down, we do have a pill bottle that's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we know every single morning she gets it and, you know, we don't have to think about it anymore for the rest of the day. We know she took it and we're good to go. And it's just our system now, it's our routine. So if you have something like this, you know, find a routine, find a system and um, take it one step at a time. Call the doctors, you know, they I have all of their numbers. And I have a folder right here, and it's specifically just for Ellie's paperwork on this biotin, uh, biotinidase. Like, it's everything they give us when we're done being there at the genetic doctor. This nothing um, pediatrician-wise goes in here. It's a whole separate folder. So, and like I said, I have their phone numbers. And any question I call right away, I had a question with this one. Um, with this second pregnancy and this baby and I just needed to call because the pediatrician said one thing and he kind of scared the crap out of me, uh, to be very blunt. So I called and they, they did finally get back to me. You know, sometimes they do have to do a little research, you know, they're still kind of like the researching doctors and, uh, make sure that the babies are healthy and they know everything and they got back to me and what the pediatrician said didn't really seem to affect us so I'm thankful for that too so uh, baby number two is healthy and happy in there and um, and Ellie is healthy happy and growing uh, very quickly so guys thanks for watching guys if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and um, if your kid has a genetic disease um, or even biotinidase I'd love to just kind of hook up and chit chat or whatever and um, and yeah make sure that you te get your test your newborn tested for genetic screening you guys it is very important for their health um, even if they're not born in the hospital you probably can take them to a pediatrician and the pediatrician can do it there and just say I need blood work for genetic screening you know and just go from there but get them tested guys um, it's their health and it could be very curable or fixable um, just through like a little capsule like Ellie's doing. Alright guys, thanks!